Recently, transcripts from Kesha's legal battle with Dr. Luke were unsealed. This means we get to look at what's really gone down behind the scenes. In these unsealed files, we learn that Kesha was forced to work with Dr. Luke against her will. On top of that, it's clear Kesha has been very upfront about what Dr. Luke has done to her. She told a handful of people about the night that Dr. Luke attacked her, and these transcripts prove Kesha right. It's time we reignite the free Kesha movement because she's still stuck in this record label with Dr. Luke. So let's get into it. <music> As you guys know, Kesha is an American singer and songwriter. She's been in the business for quite some time, but she hasn't always had a good run because she's been in a seven-year-long legal dispute with her record label's CEO, Dr. Luke. If you guys have not seen my video about their legal battle, definitely go check it out. There is so much to it, but today we're going to be focusing on some recently unsealed transcripts, which reveal a lot about what Kesha went through with Dr. Luke. I mean, this man has tried everything in his power to discredit Kesha, but these legal filings are damning, and it shows that she has been vocal about what Dr. Luke has put her through for some time. So it's time to listen to what she She's been through and to make some real change because like I said at the beginning of this video she is still stuck in this record label with Dr. Luke and it's time that she is set free. Before we get into this video, I do want to give a shout out to our friend Kesha Discord on Twitter. Their page will be linked below, but they're a great resource for updates on Kesha's legal battle. So let's talk about what we're looking at today. We have two unsealed transcripts. We have one from David Sonnenberg and another one from Georgina McAvena. These two both worked very closely with Kesha in the beginning of her career, and they have knowledge about what happened between Kesha and Dr. Luke. The reason why these transcripts were unsealed is because Kesha actually requested for them to be unsealed in November 2020. And there's a good reason why, because like I said, Dr. Luke really tries to make it look like Kesha has been lying, but these transcripts say otherwise. Kesha and her team are preparing for a jury trial, and that's why she asked to get these depositions released, because they show that at least David and Georgina were aware of what she went through with Dr. Luke. Before we get into what was revealed, let me remind you guys who David is. He's actually the CEO of Das Communications, which is a company that Kesha signed to very early on in her career. It also looks like Georgina was close to Kesha and David back in the day. I'm not entirely sure what role she played on Kesha's team, but she knew a lot. In David Sonnenberg's deposition, we learned that Kesha was blackmailed into working with Dr. Luke and Larry Rudolph. He claims that he heard that Dr. Luke's conduct was illegal and unethical, and that Dr. Luke was trying to blackmail Kesha into working with Larry Rudolph. And actually, if Kesha didn't work with Larry, he claims that she would never work again, that he would pretty much blacklist her from the industry. Obviously, that's not okay that Dr. Luke would threaten Kesha. I mean, thinking back, she was so young and vulnerable at that time. She was so determined to get her music career off to a good start that I'm sure it all deterred her from ever standing up against Dr. Luke. And we actually learned from David's transcript that it doesn't seem like Dr. Luke is a well-liked guy. David claims he doesn't have any serious issues with Dr. Luke, but he claims, I found Dr. Luke to be too self-involved for my taste and too pushy, too arrogant. You know, he was a legend before his time. I wasn't talking about his talent because I actually thought he was quite talented, but he's not my kind of person. Now let's talk a little bit about what was revealed in these unsealed transcripts. If you take a look at the redacted version of these files versus the unredacted versions, it's like they took away all of the important and relevant information that shows that Kesha was telling the truth. Again, trying to make Dr. Luke look innocent for whatever reason. And actually, we learn about a phone call that Kesha made to David where she frantically called him in November 2005 informing him what she went through with Dr. Luke just the month before. Starting on line 14, David claims that he got a rather frantic phone call from Kesha that she needed to speak with him, and at that point he was actually in California working with the Black Eyed Peas, but then he had a meeting with 
Kesha and her mother and Georgina to discuss what was going on between Kesha and Dr. Luke. During that meeting, Kesha shared that Dr. Luke told her that if David Sonnenberg was going to manage her, that she would never work again. For some reason, Dr. Luke really doesn't like this David guy and wanted Kesha all to himself. Like I mentioned earlier, Kesha was forced to have Larry Rudolph as her manager and she wasn't happy about it. Actually, David claims after about a week of having Larry as her manager, she felt like she wasn't being represented properly and that uh, Larry Rudolph was pretty much just rolling over and playing dead for Dr. Luke so that he had control over everything. David actually claims that Kesha wanted him to be her manager so badly that she was prepared to go against Dr. Luke's wishes. I don't know what's up with Larry Rudolph, but that guy gives me bad vibes. We've actually talked about him before in reference to the Free Britney movement because he was very entrenched in Britney's conservatorship. So, I mean, these men, Dr. Luke and Larry Rudolph, they seem like they're talented at going and finding talented people to take advantage of and turn into money-making machines. But we need to talk a little bit about Phoebe, Kesha's mother, because Kesha and her mother are very close. Actually, Phoebe is a songwriter and she's been in the business for a long time so she's kind of familiar with the industry and how dark it can be and she was very upfront with David about what Kesha was going through with Dr. Luke. As I mentioned earlier, they had a meeting because Kesha frantically called David and she wanted to tell him about what Dr. Luke was putting her through. And actually, Phoebe, Kesha's mother, shares that Dr. Luke was doing drugs in Kesha's presence. Uh, she was in his hotel room. They ended up like getting physical and doing it. Obviously, it's not like they were doing it because it wasn't consensual because Kesha was so messed up that she could never consent to that. So he got her all like, I guess, drugged up after. After Nikki Hilton's birthday party, they ended up like doing it without consent. And then she woke up without any clothes on and she was petrified. David actually recalls a quote from Phoebe where she says she felt like it was despicable. The things that had gone down between Kesha and Luke. There was also an email that revealed that Kesha was really concerned about this and David was trying to bring awareness to it, but we'll revisit that email in a moment. This transcript here aligns with what we were just talking about because David went to lunch with Kesha, Phoebe, and Georgina, and at that point, they shared everything. David goes into detail on how Kesha was forced to be managed by Larry Rudolph, and actually Larry made her feel uncomfortable. She felt like he was a shield for Dr. Luke. Then Kesha's mother, Phoebe, chimes in. And actually, David recognizes that Phoebe is familiar with the music industry. She is a writer. She's a very caring and nurturing mother. And he actually has a lot of respect for her. When they all met for lunch that day, it seemed like Kesha and Phoebe were trying to figure out how to get out of their agreement with Dr. Luke. And at that point, they share that like he violated Kesha, not only with drugs, but with getting physical and things like that and they felt like that would be enough to help get Kesha out of their agreement because she no longer wanted to work with him after this horrific event. David actually asks Phoebe a little bit about their lawyer and their contract and even Phoebe recognizes that it wasn't a very good contract. I mean there's a reason why Kesha is still stuck in this contract till this day. I have no idea what type of contracts they're writing up in Hollywood but to think that this man, this grown man Dr. Luke, can go and and violate a minor, an underage minor Kesha at this point, and still like withhold his contract with her just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I feel like it should be terminated because obviously, like, I mean, if she was violated in this manner, it's not okay that this man is managing her entire life, especially when her real manager, Larry Rudolph, isn't doing anything and Dr. Luke is in full control. Something I found interesting in this transcript is the fact that, okay, so if we look back at what Kesha went through with Dr. Luke, right? So she went to Nikki Hilton's birthday party, and after that night, they stayed in a hotel, and that's when everything went down. But actually, during that lunch, between all of them, Phoebe shares, and I'm going to go right down here to the line right here, she shares that Dr. Luke had repeatedly given her drugs and was doing drugs in her presence. When I hear repeatedly, I'm like, wait, repeatedly? So more than once, just that one time, uh, was she given multiple different drugs? And I feel like 
I mean, that just sounds so serious that she should be able to terminate her contract. David Sonnenberg also shares that he didn't know what to do in this situation because he knew that Kesha did not have the financial ability to go and fight a lawsuit with Dr. Luke. And just a few weeks ago, everything was like, okay. So at this point, he's trying to give them advice on like how to move forward. But like, he's just like a management company over here. He's not like a legal expert. And he didn't really know what to tell them because Dr. Luke seemed very powerful, at least with the way that he's speaking about him. Actually, at the end of this, he seems a little bit cowardly because he really didn't want to be involved in anything, which why did you go and meet with them like for a lunch? I mean, guess I guess he was just trying to be nice, but like he said that he didn't want to be involved in the lawsuit and he wanted to keep peace with Larry and Luke. So looks like this guy, David, didn't want anything of what Kesha was going through. I don't know what David Sonnenberg could have done for Kesha, but I just wish he did a little bit more because it seems like nobody was there for her. It's like, oh, well, you signed off with some of the biggest people in the industry. Good luck, even though she was repeatedly telling these people that she was R-worded by Dr. Luke. In this unredacted version of the filing, we do confirm that Kesha did in fact tell David and members of his teams that she was essayed by Dr. Luke back in 2005. It also looks like she reported to some managers in 2006 as well, so she was constantly telling people. And here's another unredacted version that shows that Kesha did tell her management team in 2005 that this went down, which she's telling all of these people that this has happened to her, yet nobody is there standing up for her. And why are we redacting things that are so important to her case? I think it's interesting that Dr. Luke is so pressed over these parts of this filing that show that Kesha was so open about what happened to her because he's trying to discredit everything. Like, I mean, Dr. Luke has tried to make this seem like Kesha and her mother have been trying to extort him for money. So in his mind, he's trying to make it seem like Kesha didn't tell anyone about this because she and her mother, like, you know, made this plan together and schemed together to go and get him after the fact. I can't even begin to think about how Kesha was feeling at this moment because keep in mind, guys, she was an underage girl. She just started her music career. She doesn't even have music out yet. And her, like, you know, record label CEO, producer man essayed her. She's told multiple adults about this and nobody's doing anything because Dr. Luke is just so powerful that everyone's so scared of him. But there's actually this one email that was leaked that shows that David was reaching out to someone named Mr. Clark and informed them that Kesha was going through this with Dr. Luke. Here's the email that David sent to Mr. Clark, and it was on March 23rd, 2006. He writes, um, tell Michael if Luke doesn't work out a reasonable deal quickly by like next week, you have been instructed to file an action, public record, no hold barred, the kitchen sink, his father's mustache, what? You know the drill, nasty, drug infested, S.A., underage, blah, blah, blah. A bunch of different words that sound really concerning, and it sounds like David Sonnenberg was like kind of prepared to go and try to take like public action against Dr. Luke for Kesha, but again, I don't know who this Clark person is, and it's kind of confusing. But what this one email does show us is that there is actually recorded proof of David knowing about this. So it's not just like David talking about this lunch. It's also an email written down from 2006 where he's acknowledging what Kesha has told him about Dr. Luke, which that's very important evidence. When it comes to Georgina McAvena's deposition and her transcript, hers is very interesting because it sounds like she's trying to act like she really doesn't know much about the situation. I don't know if it's because she was scared, she didn't want to be, you know, implicated in this lawsuit with such powerful people like Dr. Luke and Sony, but it is kind of bizarre to revisit those transcripts. Like this one, where the interviewer asks Georgina about the roofie that Kesha was given. She claims that Kesha said that she'd been roofied once at a party an event that they had been at, but she claims that she doesn't remember who Kesha said actually roofied her. On line 21, the interviewer actually asked Georgina about the email we were just talking about, and she says, uh, they ask, well, have you seen this email before that um, Das has written to Mr. Clark? So who David wrote to Mr. Clark? And she said, 
uh-huh, as you guys can see, which that doesn't fly in the court. It's yes or no, ma'am. You can actually tell on the following page that the interviewer was going to ask the same question again until they got a yes, and then she said yes. They asked again, have you ever seen this before? And then she looked and said, give me a minute to have a look at it. I don't remember seeing it, this email previously. So it sounds like she claims that she didn't actually see the email, but she heard about it because down here, she talks about how Kesha was claiming that Dr. Luke had given her some drugs and that he, uh, you know, did some things to her, some horrific things. The interviewer also asked Georgina what she thought about Kesha's mother, Phoebe, because they're constantly trying to tear down Phoebe because she's been standing with her daughter this entire time. They ask, is Phoebe a truthful person to your knowledge? At that point, someone objects and doesn't want to hear Georgina's answer, I guess. Um, but then she later on answers and says, I thought she was a nice person. Then they asked Georgina if she thought that Phoebe was an honest person. And she was like, when I worked with her, and it looks like it was going back and forth, back and forth. And finally, she claims, when I dealt with her, I felt like she was an honest person. Again, trying to make it seem like, oh, well, if Georgina doesn't think that, you know, Phoebe was honest, then why would you trust anything from her? Still asking questions about Phoebe's honesty. They ask, and now you don't think she's an honest person? And um, Georgina says, I have no idea. I haven't had any contact with them since that lunch, I'm assuming. My experience of her is yes, that is correct. Then the interviewer asks, so if Phoebe were to testify under oath that David called Luke a drug dealer and a creep and all sorts of nasty other things at that meeting, at that lunch, does that refresh your recollection as to other things that David said. Georgina replied, no, I don't recall that being said by David at all. They ask again, are you swearing under oath that that did not happen? And she claims I'm saying it did not happen. They're saying, you're saying it did not happen. She's claiming, I'm saying it did not happen. And then the interviewer asks, so you're saying that the information that David came up with in that email that we were looking at um, came from Phoebe and Kesha. Is that your testimony? So they're pretty much trying to figure out like where where is this intel on Dr. Luke is actually coming from? And if it's coming from Phoebe and Kesha, can we actually trust them? That's why he keeps asking, like, do you think Phoebe's honest or not? Because they're really trying to make Dr. Luke look innocent. The interviewer actually asked Georgina specifically about the drug infested part and the essay part, but they have no idea when it comes to specifics. Again, I don't know what to make of this email, so if you guys want to pause it and read it for yourselves and maybe go look for the um, unredacted version on our friend's Twitter page, I would encourage you to do so because it's written in such a weird way that I don't understand how anyone would like communicate like this. Looking through Georgina's declaration, it actually looks like she shares that Kesha did in fact tell her that she was scared of Dr. Luke. And I think this was even before the incident went down. So even before the whole Nikki Hilton night, she was already scared of this man for probably good reason. On line 18, she starts talking about the fact that Kesha was scared of Dr. Luke. And they ask, when did she tell you that she was afraid of him? And she claims while they were managing Kesha. Actually, a few times she ran into Dr. Luke. And because they did business in the past, she felt like Georgina felt like Kesha was scared because they had some kind of like business relationship and it was really awkward for her. On line seven, they ask, did she tell you specifically why she was scared of Dr. Luke? And she claims at the time she said that no. On line seven, they ask, did she tell you specifically why she was scared of Dr. Luke? And she claims when we started working together, she felt like he was very aggressive in business. And there had been some sort of mention of a roofie, actually. I don't know the details of that, but I don't know if that had anything to do with it. So I guess this conversation happened after the incident went down. So, oh gosh, I mean, the part that I can't get over is the fact that Dr. Luke has been so involved in Kesha's businesses after this event. Like, I feel like if you did that to someone, you would just kind of let them go. But, you know, that's not what Dr. Luke wants. He wants full control over her and her career and her music. I know for a fact that Dr. Luke has some pretty insane lawyers defending him, like people who will tear you apart, which that is so frightening for someone like Kesha, who, you know, 
didn't have a huge career, didn't have a huge following. She was just starting out. And actually, I was looking through these transcripts and I have to read a part to you because it sounds like in the courtroom, they were literally arguing. Like when I was reading this, I was like, uh, is this not a script for a movie? Because this sounds so crazy and it must have been so heated in those court hearings. It makes sense why Kesha would get so emotional because these people were fighting back and forth and Dr. Luke wasn't giving up. I don't know who Mr. Freundlich or who Miss LaPera are in reference to this court hearing. I'm assuming there are lawyers on each side, whether it's, you know, Dr. Luke's or Kesha's. But starting on line 20, Mr. Freundlich says, we'll start with the lunch then. You know, that lunch that uh, David and Georgina and everyone was at. And Miss LaPera replies, I'm asking this witness to tell me specifically everything that she claims. And then Mr. Freundlich interrupts and says, don't point at the witness. I I told you that last time. Miss LaPera says that she's saying under oath, don't interrupt in the middle of a question, Ken. She calls him Ken, oh my gosh. And then Ken, Mr. Frundlich says, then keep your hand down, please. So I guess she was pointing at something and he said, don't you point at the witness. And then she's like, don't you interrupt me, Ken. I'm like, oh my gosh, what? Like, episode of, like, a Netflix show is this? Miss LaPera responds with, I'm allowed to put my finger... Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm six feet away from the witness, okay? If I want to use my hands, I can. Keep your comments to yourself. Whoo! I can't even start to imagine the tension in that courtroom because it sounds like these lawyers were fighting. Besides all the back and forth and the bickering in court, this was a major win for Kesha today because in my last video about this situation, which honestly great timing, like I covered it and then like the next week later there's an update and I'm going to be here to continue updating you guys on this. but. What a huge win for Kesha to have these unsealed, especially before a big jury trial because they can actually go back and see that a lot of people were aware of what she went through with Dr. Liu. But like I said earlier, I'm going to continue to update you guys on this case because I am so invested in freeing Kesha from her record label. If you guys have any other video ideas for me, here is my email below. But let's go ahead and ch uh, check out this uh, PO Box package item. Oh my gosh, guys. This video has actually taken me a long time to uh, record just because I... Uh, these like... When it comes to legal things, I just want to make sure I get it right. So I read it over and over and over again to really understand what's going on here. So I'm feeling a little bit drained at the end of this video, but um, I, I can't even imagine how Kesha's feeling. So I just go back to that. I'm like, oh my gosh, imagine. So this is from actually someone named Taylor, and it looks like they are from um, the United States on the West Coast. And it looks like they have a shop. Yes, love that. It's called Shop Golden Tempress on IG. Handmade affordable jewelry. Cute. And they write this letter. Oh my gosh, it's kind of hard to read. Um, so they've got shop info. Everything will be listed below. And then she writes, P.S. Oh, wait, Sloan. Okay. Sloan, your videos have always been such a breath of fresh air. You cover real topics, not dumb TikTok star drama. Oh my gosh. You have made real changes. Aw, and all for the better. I wanted to send you some of my handmade items as a thank you for using your platform to make change. I am not sure if you like pink. Aw, but it screams Britney. I love that. I'm actually going to the Free Britney rally in LA next month. So I've never been to LA and I'm really excited to meet you guys in person if you're going to be there. Um, let's see. The other bracelet is my own rendition of yours you made on vacation oh my gosh i made on vacation and then i lost <gasps> you just gave me goosebumps because that's so cute oh thank you taylor because i made this like bracelet and then i lost it the day i did and i really loved the bracelet and i didn't remake it because i was like you know what i loved it and it's gone now it's like you know some little kid could pick it up on the road and you know have it but oh that's so sweet taylor and that's so like um uh, that's such a um i don't know that's such a sweet like gesture that you would think to like try to like you know do that so let's go ahead and see what she sent me definitely go check out her shop below i'm really excited to wear this jewelry like the free britney stuff whenever i, I am at the rally so i'll definitely be wearing that and oh my gosh oh my gosh <gasps> this is so cute why does this look just like so much like that one like with the glass beads and everything <gasps> this is so pretty i love this bracelet thank you so much taylor this is so cute and it's like i love these colors too oh i could just fit her right on <gasps> With the paper, too. I'm going to be wrapping your brand. I'm just kidding, though. But, wow, this is so special to me. Thank you. And then, oh, my gosh, these bracelets. I'm going to be wearing these at the rally. Or these necklaces. I'm going to be wearing these at the rally. Look at that. It says Free Britney on it. <gasps> Such a vibe. Oh, my gosh. I love this. Thank you so much. And I love the one my name, too. Like, oh, my gosh. We have my name on everything, but also, like, we love that. We love a self-branded king, right? 
Oh, this is so cool. I had to put one on to show you guys. Aw, oh, thank you so much, Taylor. This is awesome. I'm going to link everything below. Definitely go and check out her shop. These are so cute. Also, she said the free Britney one wasn't for sale, but it sounds like she can customize it. So I'm sure if you reach out to her, she would make you anything you'd like. Thank you so much, Taylor. Go support her business and also support Free Cash Up because I really want to get this movement going again. So until next time, let me know what you want to see in my next video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.